us. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Wow. I mean, this is crazy. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. I imagine that's how Disney Plus imagines how the majority of fans reacted to this episode. Like, here you go, guys. We finally gave you Daredevil. Can you like our show now? And after a flip-flop last two episodes of going from their absolute best to their absolute low, She-Hulk Attorney at Law Episode 8 is back at it again with its most highly anticipated episode. And I'm here to tell you, we're back on top. It's crazy to think how a show like She-Hulk can have such a divisive community when it comes to its quality. Now don't get me wrong, for all of you where this is your first review of mine for the show, turn off your brain cells, you don't need them, and you'll definitely have a more enjoyable time consuming product without them. For everyone not living under a rock, this is THE episode, the Daredevil episode, and after getting three incredible seasons of Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock, the announcement was made, the anticipation grew, it diminished, and it grew again, and finally, now it's showtime. What would Daredevil bring to the incredible and the riveting show of She-Hulk Attorney at Law? And it turns out, absolutely everything. Daredevil with She-Hulk Episode 8 was She-Hulk's best episode yet in my opinion, and I'm here to tell you guys why. But first, as always, the episode kicks off introducing the audience to the character of Leapfrog, or Frog Boy, Frog Man, Frogger, who knows, more than likely a niche character fan favorite that I don't follow. After a superheroing attempt gone wrong with his suit going up in flames and a malfunction, without looking deeper into his own incompetence, the next logical route is to sue the man that made the suit for you. A dashing gentleman by the name of Luke Jacobson, who we will be referring as Edna Mode, I'm sure you guys all remember her, and also happens to make articular characters outfits for She-Hulk. Blatantly disregarding the conflict of interest, She-Hulk and her firm are tasked with the case of representing the Frogman, due to his father being a high-ranking client of the firm. Ah, but now who will be representing Mr. Mode? Surely a man of his stature and caliber wouldn't be representing himself, right? Yeah. Hey. Oh yeah, there we go. Matt Murdock has entered the chat. And after engaging in the first actual halfway engaging courtroom scene of the show as a whole, the judge finds Frogger to be absolutely incompetent and Edna Mode is cleared of all charges. Now I guess this is where the episode takes a sharp turn for people and man I just don't understand. I get the aspect of Marvel being family friendly and I wouldn't recommend you watching this show with your chickens. But otherwise, who cares if She-Hulk is a s Ah, sorry about that, a strong woman in charge of her own body and her choices. The two then proceed to have a normal and flirty engagement at the bar after the court case, with Jen letting us know throughout how absolutely turned on she is while the writers continue to stick their heads up their asses while showing their complete incompetence of how men actually act in the world. There's a hot chick over there. I'm gonna go talk to it. <laughs> so funny. Daredevil or Matt Murdock then receives a call from I can only imagine being Karen or Foggy or maybe Edna Mode. Doesn't matter. Who cares? The writers know what I'm here for. And man, let me tell you, there was not high hopes when it came to the majority of the community. We've seen what happens to our legacy characters in Phase 4, and there was no way they were going to do that with Daredevil, right? There's no need to really make a character canon just to make him a joke. Right? I don't know, it's definitely split down the middle of the fandom, but I would like to say that I think they did some justice here. Ah, let me rephrase. They did the bare minimum, which is a good job for Marvel, so good job. We see Daredevil in his new suit and have a short 1v1 with She-Hulk that lasted maybe a little longer than it should have seeing the difference in power scaling, as well as having formulaic action-based superhero Marvel team-ups with Daredevil taking out some goons or henchmen. There's a debate on that. And She-Hulk delivering some, uh, comedy. Yeah. <laughs> All jokes aside though, there was actually some well-balanced scenes with Charlie Cox and Jen Maslany. There was actually genuine chemistry between the actors, and they had something in common with their professions in the courtroom, but having completely different lifestyles outside with Matt's identity still being a secret for most of society, and honestly, seeming to be still condensed to the borough of Hell's Kitchen. Compared and contrast to Jen, where the superhero lifestyle is still vaguely new to her, and having to manage all of that with her identity being out in the public eye. With all of this, it leads into the reasons why Jennifer Walters and Daredevil oh, 
Now I'm trying to tell you guys, this show is all over the place. On one side of the writing room, it's people trying to tell us, the audience, that Jen is a single, lonely, unattractive woman that had and continues to have a hard time attracting men. While on the other side, we now have eight episodes of She-Hulk and Jen has slept with three different dudes in around a two-week period. Now I'm all about being a sk My bad, a strong woman in charge of her body and her choices. But it's one or the other, it's mixed messaging in a way. If she's going to have casual flings, don't promote that she's also looking for a long-term relationship. You just gotta choose, but no adult watching this show actually cares. Leading us to, I guess, the huge plot twist of the show. Just like Jen, I thought we were in and out, over and done. Got some Daredevil, got an action scene, see you next week. But nope, we have the Female Lawyers Gala, which was mentioned a couple times throughout the episode, but definitely seemed like a finale type of vibe. But I guess something did have to happen in the show besides Daredevil showing up before the finale. So while everybody thought that Daredevil entering the chat was going to be the eye-popping moment of this episode, let me tell you, we were dead wrong. Enter the chat, She-Hulk sex tape. What an absolutely insane turn of events, like, what? Well, you see, remember Good Boy, Josh? Yeah, we were calling him Good Boy over here. Well, yeah, at the end of the episode that it was revealed that he slept with Jen in order to steal some of her blood, Turns out, that man is also a pervert who filmed their entire night with Jen without Jen's consent. It's pretty sick to be honest. And while Jen is receiving her THE MESSAGE award alongside with the multitude of other champions in their profession, the system is hacked and much like how Peter Parker's identity was revealed to be so monumental, it's revealed that She-Hulk Like, what? <laughs> what's going on here? So me personally, I like it just because I'm someone who enjoys the smaller interpersonal conflicts to overcome, rather than the world-ending stakes. It builds the character more, and with the superhero being in the public eye, this is something realistic that could happen, but nothing that I truly thought would happen when it comes to the MCU. But even in a show like The Boys, this is something that could very much realistically happen to any superhero that has any type of normalcy in their outside life. And with the cancel culture society that we live in today, it's completely understandable that this has the potential to destroy Jen's life outside of She-Hulk. It was Jen on that tape, not She-Hulk. And even if it was, it wouldn't matter. She'll lose her job and credibility as a person just because she... God, fuck. And she didn't even consensually consent to the tape. At least we don't think so by the way that she reacted. But she could have also just been embarrassed We'll see. And while I still don't understand where this story goes, not only in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the MCU, but just in the isolated show we're watching, I personally thought it was an interesting change of events and stakes in the MCU. Something we've truly never seen before. She-Hulk has been a roller coaster. At its best, well, it's a Daredevil show. And at its worst, well, it's a She-Hulk show. But right now, we're back on top after a great episode 6, a dumpster fire of episode 7, and a superhero team up sex tape have in episode 8. What more could I possibly hope for? A lot. So, so much more. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos. We got the She-Hulk finale coming up next week. Again, who would have imagined that we would have been here? And guess what? I can finally say something actually happened in the show. Imagine. But that's all the words I got for you guys today, so I'll see you guys in the finale. Bye.